Hey guys, it's Tasha. Welcome to Britches Get Stitches. It's good to see you guys back. Those of you that are coming back, uh, those that are new. Hello, great to meet you. Welcome to my little crazy corner, part of the internet. <laughs> uh, this is my channel about cross stitch and sewing and whatever random crafts I get up to, um, but primarily cross stitch. Uh, I started this as just a little vlog journey. Does anybody say vlog anymore? I don't think so, but a video journal of my cross stitching just to kind of keep track of everything that I'm doing and to chit chat and have fun with the cross stitch community out there. So if you found me by some random algorithm on YouTube, I'm glad you did. <laughs> Good to meet you. Uh, I'm also Britches Get Stitches over on Instagram. Uh, if you like what you see, there's a thumbs up button down below and a subscribe button somewhere in the vicinity. Feel free and I would love to have you back next time. Um, I will save like all of my like life update things for the end for those that want to hang around. Um, and uh, for the rest, we'll just like go right into stitch updates. Um, the I've got my notes over here. That's why I'm looking sideways. Uh, the... First thing is finishes. I don't have any fully finishes, um, but I do have one finish that I have to show a picture of um, because I uh, already gave it to my friend. Um, this is Meet Me at Midnight. I made this for a friend of mine who is in love with Taylor Swift. I don't know what half the things mean on this, um, but she knew. <laughs> so that was what was important. Um, this one was the design by Frizzy Lizzie Stitches. Uh, and it turned out beautifully. I love the fabric that I used on it. I did, I did like, um, a purple writ dye just on some 40 count fabric. Uh, I will say the 40 count definitely made like the words and stuff like on the name tag come out a lot smaller and harder to read, but you got the picture. So it was all fine. Uh, and so that's my only finish so far. Uh, I know it's been three weeks, but I've been doing a lot of different random stitching and I meant to come back two weeks ago, but uh, didn't happen. So life, yay. <laughs> uh, but I have done a lot of other stitching. It's not in any particular order. So we're just gonna kind of weave our way through it all. So the first one I will show you is the Wizard of Oz. <clears throat> this one is charted by Hayde and it is uh, designed by Scott Gustafson. And last time you saw it, I was about here and um, I'm still so much in love with full coverage. It's just amazing. It's so much fun. I love it. Um, this is where I've gotten to so far. And I've decided that uh, I wanted, first I was converting it to Royal Rose because I was like, okay, let's follow what everybody else is doing. It's how it should be, I guess. Uh, maybe that'll be a little smoother for me. We'll see. It's not. <laughs> I don't like Royal Rose. Uh, maybe just for this one. I don't know. Um, I kind of go, I, I'm wishy-washy. I go back and forth. So I started doing um, what somebody in the Hade Sal coined as a uh, field and frolic. So you plant your field and then when you get to the end of like end of this tower or like end of this tower, then you frolic through the rest of the pattern, fin finishing out the, the thread. And I really liked that method. So I'm gonna stick with that a little bit and see how that does. I don't know. <laughs> we'll find out, but I'm I'm really enjoying it still. And it's um, it's getting there little by little. Uh, let's see, moving this around. Okay, the next one I have to show is Respect Your Earth. And this one was by Romy's Creations as part of the Earth Day collaboration sale. I didn't do much on it, but, on it, um, but I was doing a, um, a prompt for uh, Whip Warriors for the categories, and I needed an E in the pattern title. <laughs> so Respect Your Earth is what I got. And so the only thing I added was Your Earth, and I didn't even finish Earth because I ran out of green. <laughs> uh, and I have to be careful on this one because it's like see-through. So like depending on how I'm gonna finish it, um, you can't really see. There's, you know, I'm, I'm carrying the, the thread across the word, so I have to be careful how I finish it so that that doesn't show through because this is very see-through fabric. So, uh, we'll find something. If you have ideas, I'll gladly take them. Um, I, I want something funky. Like, I kinda wanna, I don't know, put it on some sort of like 
green, dusty green background that like you can, you can see through it maybe. I, I don't know. I want something cool for it. I just don't know what that cool is. <laughs> so feel free to, to let me know. Uh, the next one that I have to show is Woman in a Field of Flowers. It's the third one in the series. It's by Stitches So Beautiful. I have ranted and raved about Stitches So Beautiful on so many floss tubes that I'm just not going to do it again. This is where I was last time and there um, there have been a few competitions on the, the group page, just like how many can you get um, within the week and I am not even close to competing with half these people on here, but it's fun. Uh, and so I've got it out of the Q-snap now because I'm using the Q-snap for another piece, but this is where I'm at. Look at that, man, it's coming along. It's a lot more blockier than the Wizard of Oz piece, which I think is why it's moving so much faster because I've got a lot more of the same color in the spot. Um, there's just a lot more confetti on the, the Wizard of Oz one. So this one is coming along quickly and I'm having a lot of fun with it. It is on a 28 count, uh, it's one of those like witch out packets. I think it was cash out maybe. Um, yeah, I can't think off the top of my head. Uh, one of the things I just got on YouTube, on, um, on YouTube, on eBay, uh, nothing special. And yeah, so there's that one. Next up is in a me made, me made bag. I love these colors together. I think these, this is, it's a navy. It looks kind of black on there, but I hope it's coming across as navy for you guys because it's it works really well with this gray interior here. Love that one. And this one is This Joyous Season by Plum Street Samplers. Uh, this is the one that it's, um, Stitching is elementary and Mrs. Smith Stitches are um, doing the sal. It's Stitch This Joyous Season. And this is where I was last time. And I put I mean, quite a bit in it. Um, it's a little bit harder to see though because I kind of focused on um, the snow since that just is such a big patch down there. Here, let me show you the full. Um, one of these days I'll iron. <laughs> when it's done, right? So I focus down here because the entire bottom of this is covered in the snow. And so I was like, well, let's get this going. And so I figured I would give a good chunk down here in the corner. Um, that's about 500 stitches right there. So it's quite a bit. This is on a 36 count hazelnut by X2 Designs. Love how I remember that one, right? I really love this fabric. It's like buttery. Um, and I'm doing this one in all the called for, so I'm using the silks and everything for that. I think it's the only, no, I don't wanna, I was gonna say, I think it's the only one I'm doing uh, called for is in, but that's not, that's not true. Um, it's one of like two that I'm doing the called for silks in. I pretty much stick to called for. Next one, another me made bag. This was like the first bag I ever made. Uh, and it hangs around. I've got like two of them, I think. Because when I make the bags, I'm not really making them to sell, but I have enough fabric that I can make two. So there's probably going to be like two of each color if I have enough fabric. So the next one is Dolphin's Domain. It's a dimensions kit that I'm doing. Um, this is the one that has a lot of the blends and stuff. So this is my first piece that I'm doing like blending and such and it's turning out pretty well this is where I was last time and um did I work on it for like two prompts I think it was only like one maybe two prompts we'll see um I've got it all clipped up because it's easier to hold but this is where I am now so Mr. Uh, Dolphin up here is prime is practically done um he's what I focused on so I've just got like his stomach there and then I was moving down into this guy here. So we'll we'll see uh, these dolphins come together pretty quick, I think. It's a lot of fun to stitch on. Again, I stitch in hand for most of my projects, except for full coverage. 
Um, and so it's, it's pretty smooth, smooth sailing. Uh, my next one is the Greenhouse of Oddity style by Lola Crow. Uh, and I'm like making this one a priority to do like a prompt or two for the Phantom Stitching Group that I'm in for like at least one or two weeklies a month um, so that I can get some progress on it because I really want to see this one done. And uh, this is where I was last time you saw it. And I actually... <laughs> had to pull it out of that Q-snap because I needed the Q-snap for um, Wizard of Oz so I could carry that one. So you get to see this thing in its full glory finally, or after however long. There's my needle minder um, from, I believe it was Mad for Minders on Etsy. And most of what I did was over here in, in this area, um, but I've still got, you know, a, a good chunk down over here. Uh, I haven't really touched much of anything in the middle. Uh, it's just, I want to get one of the sides done so that I can then move the Q-snap to the middle area and keep it there for a while so I can finish a lot of stuff. Um, but plans change as things get stitched into it, so I never stick with what I originally said I was going to do. Funny. Yes, I'm a cross-stitcher. My plans change on the daily. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, next one I worked on was the Bluey Sal. And this one I put a good chunk in because it was there was um, the prompt for um, getting a thousand stitches on a, an existing sal that you're working in. And I was like, well, I really want to get this one moving forward a lot because it's kind of just hung out there with a little bit of black for like ever. So this is where I was last time you guys put an eye on this one. And I'm still working on the black guys. I'm not even done with the frame yet. I put a thousand stitch in, stitches in this darn thing and I'm still not done with the frame. <laughs> Goodness. Oh, I started like trying to put some of their eyes in as I was going because I was like, well, I'm already over here for black. Might as well get the eyes in. Um, it's been fun. It's just a uh, 18 count Ada from Michaels, but I'm bound and determined to get this darn frame. And that's not even counting the free through on these sides and the top of the frame. Like that's just the frame. I'm bound and determined to get that frame done this year. <laughs> oh my goodness me. And my stitch count, you know how last time I, um, I, I told you my whip projects was up to, um, 71. <laughs> We've now gotten to 74 and I've got one more that I'm going to start today because I need to get my leap year sale started because I'm a little bit behind schedule. A little bit. Uh, okay. Must have lost the needle on this one because it's... Oh, I was saving thread. That's why. Here, let me move my needle minder because it's like right smack dab in the middle of the pattern. <clears throat> okay, so the next one I worked on is the Villains Mickey Silhouette and this one is part of a um, separate challenge with Phantom Stitching is like to complete all the villains and then of course then the, the um, heroes will be next. So this was where it was last time that I brought it out and um, I put quite a bit in because it it it, um, it works for any prompts because it's like a Disney Plus prompt like it um, basically in the group you have these prompts that you can you can um, stitch for but if nothing matches if you pull out something that's either full coverage or disney it's the disney plus option and it like basically like wild card and uno it counts for everything so i've been using that on this one so here it is still in the hoop because i'm still working on it um you know minder also from mad for minders i believe on etsy if i'm wrong i'll be putting that down below and i dyed the fabric Red and blue and gray went into this one. And I think I got these three. Well, I finished him from the Notre Dame and then got these three going. And I believe I've got two stitches left on Scar. Uh, I've got Vasilier's cane, belt, and smile. And then... 
like Jafar's face and the rest of his, his gown. I was gonna call it a dress. It's not a dress. It's not even a gown, robes. <sighs> and then Hades is firehead. Um, so they'll have another few of them done pretty soon. So there's that one. That one's also in a me made bag. I'll show you the back. The front's got pattern in it. So there's the inside. Okay, and then my next one up is Treasure Island, and that is by Owl Forest Embroidery, and all parts are out now, everybody else is finished, and I haven't, although I'll take that back, I think Michelle is still working on hers from Chinook Crafter, um, but this is one that I dyed the fabric myself, I did the coffee dye, here's what it was last time while I talk about this, uh, I did the coffee dye with the, um, the instant coffee and then baked it to kind of keep the um, texture. Here it is now. And I'm gonna tell you, I pretty much just did this border. I went all the way down to the bottom so I could see how far down I was gonna go. And so this is how big it's gonna be. Pretty big, it's all good. I love my fabric. I love how the colors are looking on it. It's gonna go all the way down there. I actually was stitching on this one when I was watching uh, The Rescuers Down Under uh, as part of our movie challenge event in fandom stitching. If you are not in fandom, if you have never heard of fandom, then you're obviously new here, um, but you should check out Fandom Stitching Central on Facebook. I'm on Team Donald, woo! And it's a ton of fun, uh, you need a super great community of stitchers that we all get along so well and just have a ton of fun with each other. So that's my plug. Okay, next is a dark dice badge, which is one that my husband designed for himself so that um, he could commemorate his trip over to London. Um, this is where it was last time you saw it, so not much. Um, let's see, this is in a me made bag, so here's the back, here's the front, there's all my colors, and I've already showed you because you saw it in there. This is where I got to. I need to serge these edges here. Um, but I put in about, uh, was it 1100 stitches? I think all in one day. I love how it was supposed to be like a, a dark blue. Um, but I like the gray better and Brian did too. So that all works out. Yeah. So I'm, I'm going to keep going on that one because that one was addictive probably because it was so blocky. <laughs> easy to pump out some stitches when you've got like block stitching going on. Uh, let's see. Next one. Doo, doo, doo. Where'd you go? Stop it. Where'd you go? Losing my notes. Okay. Next one. I even knew which one it was because I had it in my hand. This is the uh, Amanita Witch Bushes by Mama Witch Cross Stitch. Uh, and this is the one I'm making for a friend. This is where it was the last time it set face on screen. And um, it's for a friend of mine at LARP. Her character actually wears one of these hats, which is why I'm doing it. And um, I put in a little bit. Um, I'm trying to like color complete at this point. So like she's basically done except for her freckles. Like I finished off a lot of the 3865 in her shirt and then around the outsides all these like flowers and such um and then i think i've just got leaves left leaves his eyes and some freckles on her face and i think maybe a little bit on these bugs here but she's real close and it looks so darn good especially on the black i think that was such a good good idea um if i'm not telling you the fabrics it's because it's nothing special like this is black ada from it's 18 count from um 
Joann's, Michael's, one of the two, something I got on eBay. <laughs> one of the rando pieces of fabric. Uh, next one is one that's near and dear to my heart. I love this one so much. Um, it's a Me Made bag. Here's the outside. There's the inside. <clears throat> this is Marianne Cop. And this is one that I fell in love with on uh, Lauren New Hampshire Stitcher's page um, or her floss tube when she was going through and doing hers. And it is an absolutely gorgeous sampler that um, it's one of my first really big samplers. Um, actually, it is my first. It's my first real big sampler. And oh my gosh, it is so much fun to stitch on. So I dyed this fabric. Um, this is where it was last time you saw it. Um, this fabric is dyed with a tiny bit of gray mixed in, or no, a tiny bit of um, brown mixed in with marigold. And marigold is this just like bright, vibrant um, yellow writ dye, and I loved it. But the the gray under or the brown undertones on it kind of pulled that into more like a mustardy level. But anyway, this is where it is now. Um, working a lot on this border here. This is kind of where I did all of my work. It was only like a hundred stitches that I threw into it for the challenge this month because we've just been super busy, but um, this is what it's looking like in full. And I just, oh, it's so pretty. I can't, I should just go iron it because I really want to see what it looks like ironed. I bet it would really pop. I'm gonna take it downstairs with me and iron it. Yeah. Um, because I feel like the wrinkles don't do it justice for the, like to get the modeling and stuff out. It kind of takes away from it. So I'll put it over here so that I take it downstairs with me. Uh, let's see. Three more to show you. Whips. Um, I am doing the Creatively Crafting Challenge this year. And of course I don't, I pulled out the wrong one. Um, every year Creatively Crafting does a challenge where you get um, like different uh, challenge prompts and such and like goals of stitches that you can do and like a stitching bingo board to fill out um it's all for like imaginary points um tons of fun it's free to join but this year the stitch along that goes with it is um in a world full of muffins be a cupcake really adorable and so we get these new cupcakes um out once a month and um, I, last time you saw it, I had, I believe I had February. Did I have February in there? I don't know. I'm pretty sure I did. I really have to go through and like organize all my floss because I keep like throwing new bags, new projects into my bag every day to work on. And then I forget to put the floss away at the end of the night when I've switched, um, patterns, but I'm not used to switching patterns this often. So anyway, um, I did do a little bit of back stitching on the February one, but I want to keep a little bit open for June finishes to get some extra points for fandom stitching. So maybe I'm holding off on that for that. But then I also um, did the, the March guy and look at those greens. Oh my goodness, absolutely adorable. So stinking cute. So the only thing that's left on him is uh, the back stitching. And I've also like with January, I added in the beads, let's see. Beads in the hat, beads in the snowflake, and beads in the eyes. So I know that I'm going to put beads in the eyes for each of them. But where else should I put beads in the others? Because there's writing in each of these hearts, so I don't want to put beads in there. Maybe I could put it in... I'm definitely going to do the eyes, like I said. Maybe I could do something in the heart. I don't know. And then um, same thing for... Mr. Shamrock. I could put a little bit of jewels maybe in the coin in his hand or maybe on his buckle. I don't know. If you have suggestions, I will take them. Please and thanks. <laughs> uh, okay, this one is also in a me made bag, which I didn't show you. It's um, my Christmas bag because I don't have a lot of bags right now. I need to switch it over to one of my Shamrock bags for the, well, see, but that's just for the month. So maybe not, I don't know. Maybe it'll just migrate bags as I go through the seasons. Cause I did make two um, March, St. Patrick's Day bags. I have to like fix them cause they're not perfect like I like them. So we'll see. 
Okay, next one I worked on was uh, Frumpkin. Frumpkin. <laughs> the Frosted Pumpkin Cottage by The Witchy Stitcher. Um, and this one is Christmassy themed, but also Halloween -y themed. So it just kind of rolls all together for us. This is where it was last time. It graced your presence. I'm trying different verbiages because I feel like every single time I'm like, this is where it was last time you saw it. This is where it was last time you saw it. This is where it was last, um, same thing over and over and over again. I don't wanna get repetitive like a broken record. <clears throat> this is where it is now. And this is another fabric that I dyed, 40 count, um, just random piece of linen, I, I a linen cloth that I got at Walmart. And um, I primarily worked on the 3865 going through um, over the eaves and um, snow, a little bit of the gray there, because I wanted to get away from black. <laughs> I was doing too much black at one time. So that's what I got worked on that. So pretty, yay. And uh, that one, I think this one won for March Madness, so it gets to stay out. So what we do for March Madness at um, in the Phantom Stitching is you pick eight, no, it was 16. You pick 16 projects that um, you wanna kinda go head to head. So today's day 15, so we've got the last head to head is today and tomorrow. And it's basically whichever one you stitch the most on, that's the one that progresses to round two. And so tomorrow is the end of round one. Today is welcome to the North Pole and then tomorrow is my afternoon tea full coverage. So those two are competing. I've not worked on welcome to the North Pole yet. Whoops, so I need to work on that some today. And say that one gets 100 stitches. And then tomorrow I put 200 in afternoon tea. Afternoon tea wins and that moves on to round two. And so starting on the 17th, Sunday, that's the start of round two. And don't ask me who won the first battle because I, I don't remember. That was like 15 projects ago. Anyway, the final one whip that I have to show you is um, the Hade Sal Tintern Abbey is the one that I'm doing this year. Um, and the last time you saw it was right around here. <sighs> like that change in verbiage? And I switched it up and moved it to a smaller Q-snap so that you I could work more closely on like some of these smaller areas while at work. And this is where it is now. I've got quite a bit of this red going in there, this reddish brown. I don't know if you can, if I hide my face, maybe you'll see it. Oh, this was a gift from Fandom Stitching um, Christmas Exchange. Everybody comments on it every time they see it. I love this needle minder so much. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is coming together. It's a lot of like up and down, back and forth. So like I'll start with a color and I'll do this box and then go all the way down and then I go to the next row and go all the way up and then I go to the next row and go all the way down and then all the way up. So it's like I'm weaving my way in because Royal Rose didn't work on this one because like this chunk doesn't continue over here. So like you're doing just the first two columns and then you have to move over and then the next two columns and then you have to start a new thread. Start Cause you know, with Royal Rose, you start a new thread for every tower, every column. It wasn't working for me wanting to conserve thread, so I stopped. <laughs> and this is working for me. So uh, I'm not even close to having the first one done and the next set of patterns comes out April 1st, but that's because I um, paused on it to do another pattern for another challenge. So I'm gonna get back to this one. Yay. Okay put this back on real quick. I gotta cover up the stitches here and I will be back with my new starts. Okay, I'm back and I have five new starts to show you because that's how I roll. Uh, the first one is called Woodland Holiday. It is designed by Spot Colors, um, Nicole from Spot Colors. I'm trying not to lose my place because it's in a magazine. Not sure, well, if you have Just Cross Stitch Magazine, you've got the chart. But that's the chart I'm doing. And I didn't do a lot of progress on it. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to get uh, a little, some small starts together 
um, for June finishes for Phantom Stitching. So um, starting a few things just to put to the side and wait. This is on an 18 count Ada. Next one is called Have a Cool Christmas and it is by Lee Fisher of Stitchy Fish Designs. This is the one I'm doing right there. Super cute. Uh, and I made a bit of progress on this snowman dude. Cutting it real close on margins there. Again, it's on 18 count. Uh, Ada, see the little thing with arms? I, I already did like a, a counting error, but it doesn't matter. It's gonna be cute. So he's hanging out there. And then my third one is called Making Christmas Bright and it is by Karen Br Karen Bowen of KEB Studio Creation. This is the pattern. Uh, I'm not doing it on blue. I went ahead and stuck with the white theme because I had some scraps lying around and I got the lamp post um, pulled together for the most part. So yeah, there's that. Keep these ones together. Uh, all of my like little small starts that I'm doing for um, June finishes are going to go in like their own little separate spots so they can hang out and wait because they're not technically going into the whip pile. They are whips, but they're a special purpose whip. Uh, okay, and then the next one I did, I don't really have a picture of because it's a like a mystery style sort of like it's an ongoing, like I don't know what it's going to look like. Um, the peppermint purple sal and let's see. Is that up or is that up? This is up. There we go. And it's black work. So I got the frame filled out and then each week there's a new release and I'm doing the version that has the cross stitch in the middle. So it's not just strictly black work. And I love this. It's gorgeous. So the the um, frame is in black, 310, and then uh, the line is 311, and then the green that I'm doing, I believe it's 969? No, it's 905. So 905, 311, and 310. And these colors are great. That's up because I put my initials on the bottom. Cheezel Pete's. It's looking so good. I love it. Love, love, love it. Although I think I probably did that wrong because what's the number order? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Oh no, I'm doing it right. I'm doing it right. It's all good. It's funny how I can remember what books I'm listening to as I'm stitching this one. This book I was listening to is for book club. It's under the whispering door. And I just remember that I loved the pattern and loved the book. So all of my patterns going forward are probably gonna like be related to a book in my mind from like now until the end of time. <laughs> that and this pile is also just gonna go right upstairs and just go on the floor until I have time to put it all together because uh, I don't have time to put it back together <laughs> oh goodness okay and my final new start is um no time like the present the modern folk embroidery um 2024 sal and I debated for a long time the specifics of this. Am I going to do two over two? Am I going to do two over one? Am I going to do one over two? Um, what size am I going to do? And ultimately, I had a large portion of this um, linen, it's 32 count, um, hanging out. And I was like, I think I'm just going to do my 32 count. And take a look and I did a whole line I'll show you here of um two over two one over two and then one over one just to be like okay what do I like best and um turns out I like tiny stitches because I went with one over one and it's itty bitty can you even see that is it even focusing not really itty bitty stitches itty bitty stitch city <laughs> I'm it this is almost 
250 stitches right there <laughs> one inch right there 250 stitches I love it though I so love it um, I am doing 969 that's where I came up with that number 969 and um, 552 are my colors that I chose and I got some input from Marjorie from Marjorie made because she just got like the color eye that I don't have um, and she recommended doing that but making sure that the purple I sent her my colors and she said they were great and recommended that the purple go as the clock. And so that's the way I um, charted it. So yay, that's gonna look great. Um, plans, so I'm, I'm gonna keep with the um, March Madness for today and tomorrow. And I need to get things organized and pulled together uh, so that I can start fresh next week. So hopefully I get time to do that. Um, and then my other plan is to start my long dog sampler. It's uh, my long dog leap year. I know I'm late, but um, I'm not the only one. So I need to get that going because I finally have the fabric cut. Um, and um, I've got my silks, so I just need to come up pull it together. <laughs> uh, let's see. Haul. We'll check out my new bag. Bag of the month by Brenda Greer. Loved it. Love it. Love it. It's huge. It's perfect size. I love it. Um, great fabric. Um, Brenda's minders and more. And then what else did I get? Um, I snagged some patterns on eBay. I have been dying for this. Oh my gosh, ever since I saw Lauren New Hampshire Stitcher and then um, Janet Jabber doing this, I was like, I need this. Now I have it. <laughs> so I'm sure this is gonna be a start sooner rather than later. This thing is huge. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. What else did I get? Um, I got a three pack of Plum Street because I was looking at Miss Bingley's library. Um, I've loved this one since Bridgen Museum Stitcher was doing it. And so I saw that one and I was like, okay, well, yes. And what came with it is the Bounty Sampler, which is super cute. There you go. And earthly treasures which I thought was pretty neat so I got all three of these in a pack uh not a future like not a recent or near future site words work um not a near future start but they're currently in my possession so that's a good thing um, I don't have a TBS to show you. Uh, I didn't really look through. I just have been spending so much time stitching on these and <laughs> I got one of my TBSs, the forest grew. So yay. Um, I will give some recommendations. I was watching cross stitch the globe again, and I just love what they're doing with the, um, the university, the Cross Stitch University, it's really cool to see them um, putting out some of those those videos. Um, I know I definitely could have used them when I started cross stitching, so um, hopefully some people will find some good tips and fun things going on there. Um, what else? Uh, the Stitching Sisters just found them, and oh my gosh, they're so much fun. Like I wish I had a another person to kind of banter and stuff back off of, you know, back and forth off of, but um, sadly y'all just get me. So, um, but they're a lot of fun. I love all the bird stitching that they do. And um, I recommended a couple or another um, floss tuber to them that, you know, I stitch birds just cause all the birds that keep showing up in their, their floss tubes. Um, but they've got some really good patterns and stuff that I need to um, take some notes on again. And then uh, Steadfast Stitcher, she also stitches quite a bit of things that I would like to um, add to my list, um, but I stumbled on her the other day and added her to my subscription list as well. <laughs> it's ever growing. I'm never going to get caught up. I don't know why I even try, uh, but you know, it's, it's a, it's a hobby to 
Collect cross stitch. Well, it's a hobby to collect floss tube lists. So that's where we go. Um, okay, and then so that's the end of cross stitching. Um, I will share one of Brian's pictures off the wall. I can't remember if I've shared this one or not, but um, it says carrots, improve your night vision. And then you've got one that's got a torch, one that's got a flashlight, and the other one with night vision goggles. So I thought that was cute. Uh, okay, and then the uh, sign language. Um, today's sign of the day is wrong, which is Uh, and I decided to pair it with right. Let me back up. So you've you've got a couple new um, new words in your vocab. I didn't look them up for French and Spanish because I decided to just stick with sign language today. Um, but if you have any recommendations for um, fun words, then have at it. If not, I'll keep sticking with the sign of the day because that seems to be pretty fun. Um, and now I, I'll do just brief life updates. Um, illness decided to rule the world for our family. Um, so Lucy was on her third round of antibiotics for the fourth ear infection in a row. So she had, her first ear infection was gone with the first antibiotics. The second one, it took two. This um, third round, uh, it was gone with the first one, but then the fourth round of ear infection, we did three rounds of antibiotics and it still wasn't gone. And they were like, yeah, we need to do, we need to get her um, tubes put in and adenoids removed. And so we scheduled that. Thankfully they could do it like within a week. It was crazy. I was like, um, please let's take this you know, to the next level, get it out, done, move on. And they did. And so like she went in on Tuesday and um, Brian took her in. They were in and out in 30 minutes, I think. Um, put the tubes in, cauterized the adenoids. And then she was home on the couch for an hour and then bouncing off the walls the rest of the day. So she was totally fine. <laughs> um, and then the, let's see. That was a Tuesday and then the we found out that she has to go back and get a CT scan. Um, and so we had that scheduled for the next week but then they called and they were like, well, they called on a, a Wednesday and they said, mm, you should probably wait six weeks until after the surgery. And I was like, oh, okay, well you guys scheduled it. So we had to reschedule that. Um, and the next day, or no, that day, later that day, her daycare calls and says, I'm sorry, but I think Lucy has pink eye, so um, she will need to be picked up immediately. And I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. <laughs> so I went and got Lucy, took her to the doctor. Yep, she's got pink eyes. Then she's got to stay home. Doctor says that she's contagious for 24 hours, so she can't go to school on Thursday. And I'm like, so she missed school on a Tuesday. The very next week, missed school half of Wednesday and all of Thursday. It moved to her second eye. I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. Like, can we get a break? And then her pink eye is removed and now she's sniffling again. She's got a cold. No clue. No clue. I don't know. Um, so she's dealing with sickness, which then means we are. And, you know, we just had her birthday party, um, which was a blast, but it was a lot of people in our house. So we've got to like clean things up now after the ramshackleness of things that happened. You know, weather's getting a little bit better, so it's like, we gotta go outside and actually weed the gardens now. Um, we've got quite a few daffodils coming up, um, so that's nice, but man, it's a lot of work. Um, so it's it's just been a very busy, it's not even spring yet. I was gonna say it's been a busy spring, but it's not even spring yet. It's just been a big, busy, like, start to the new year. Um, and so I'm hoping to get back on track a little bit with like filming and stuff. I'm stitching like crazy, but finding the time to film and put it up, mm, that's a little bit harder. <laughs> I will say though, it has been awesome to see that I'm over 500 subscribers. Like who, what, five, what, that many people? No way. It warms my heart y'all. Gee, thanks. Good to see you. Um, I think that's everything like we're, there's not a lot to tell. It's just been busy. Just life. It happens. 
Um, so I just want to say thank you again to everybody that uh, came by to see my projects. It's been great to chat with all y'all. I'm not getting any like pushback, but I like, I feel it. I hear it, you know, it's there. So, um, okay. Looking forward to be back in the next two weeks. Uh, until then, I'm going to go organize this mess. No, I'm going to go dump this mess and then I'm going to go downstairs and organize my sewing corner. <laughs> Have a great one, guys. See you later.